All right, welcome to Off the Bat, episode two, with Aaron and Kevin Porter. And Kevin was just making fun of my Batman voice. Well, it, it, it was you doing a voice that a child would think Batman would sound like in his head. So a lot of people make the mistake of thinking that if they just talk in a lower voice like this, then they're sounding like Batman, and that's kind of how you sound it a little bit. I think that I sound... I don't think I sound like Batman, but I think I sound exactly how Dick Grayson would try to sound as Batman because his Batman is sometimes kind of laughed at. Exactly, so exactly. Right, so me, like a sidekick, if a little sidekick were to try to sound like a grown-up, he would sound oh, yeah. He would sound like this. Okay, like, so, uh, why, why, why don't you ready? give us your Batman? Okay, this is Dick Grayson uh-huh. as Batman. I'm Batman. Like a child. It sounds like he's trying to be something he's not. Which is a gro- grown-ass man. Look, I am taller than the average person. Well, when you're comparing yourself to the average... When you say, hey, I'm better than average, you've already lost. Just because we're not 6'5", 240, doesn't undermine that six foot 170 is still pretty I solid. I do appreciate that you are swimming in the shallow end of the gene pool, and you are maximizing your genes, and I respect that. You're getting everything out of it. You're getting everything out of it. Honestly, you've maxed out. And I'm, I'm, glad, I'm glad that I'm getting your respect. That's what I was hoping for. Yes. That's how we're starting. All right. Well, let's. Okay. So, speaking of getting your respect, this is making me. I, this, this is, I'm kidding about all of this. This is making me sound so bad. You're just, you're just your Batman's coming through. Well, my Batman. So let's let's. If you're you're gonna have all this talk, let's all hear right. how good your Batman voice is. Well, the first thing you have to do is not try. You just have to be. You just have to do. You just have to feel. All right. Fine. You win. All right. <laughs> Okay, let's go. All right, so getting your respect. Here's here's a, um, a topic that the fans upvoted, and I know you're eager to get on it. Okay. What do you think <clears throat> is the best superhero movie ever made? Easily. And yes. what to you makes a good superhero movie? Because we get we get mm-hmm. four a year now. Yeah. No, we get more than that, and I think there's so much garbage, and I think a lot of people are they're confusing color and explosions with with quality. To me, the best superhero ever made is, um, I would say, uh, Dick Donner's Superman, because um, it's it's true to the heart of the of the source material. It's a small story, and you care you care about the people, and it's not as if they create a character and then they have a bunch of explosions. The entire thing, the through line, is the love that he has for Lois Lane, and that's undeniable. And I think that Christopher Reeve captured everything about that character, the essence of it, and it wasn't. It wasn't just presented in flashes; it's through the entire thing. It was just a, it was it was a beautiful, beautiful film, well written, well acted, well directed, and the score is just above and beyond anything that's ever been done out there. I, ha- I, I I challenge you to disagree with that. Well, I think that Chris is the most perfectly cast superhero, mm-hmm. maybe the most perfectly cast person of all time, and I think that I know that's a big one. Okay. I, I think Chris is great. Right. I can't say enough great things about yeah. Chris because uh, he makes you believe that he is the superhero. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I, arguably, he has one of the most simple s- outfits, spandex, but you never question it. No one mm-hmm. ever goes, that outfit's lame because mm-hmm. that's such a big topic in superhero movies. You look at Chris and you just believe that he's Superman. Yeah. I mean, when they says they make you believe a man can fly, I believe more than any other superhero movie that Chris is the character he's playing, which makes you believe the world that he lives in. Um, obviously, it took you know it was made in the '70s, so the effects aren't as good as they are nowadays, which is what a lot of people want. They have all these bigger act. The action is not as prominent as as they are movies nowadays. I mean, Man of Steel was like 85 percent action, 15 percent story. Like it was mm-hmm. just, um, and uh, and of course, like you said, the score. I don't know if there is a superhero movie that has a better score than no. than Superman. Second would Arguably be, Batman, 89 Batman. Yeah, by uh, yeah. Shirley Walker and Danny Elfman, yeah. um, which is a great score. I actually was just yeah. listening to that last night. I, so I would say, and it's also the first too, so it's hard, and they, they establish a lot of things, but also what could be as influential would be the first Batman. I almost would have said the first Batman would be my favorite, I'm not saying it's the best, they probably would be tied for, for the best, the most influential. The difference between the two, and I love 89 Batman, and I love anything Michael Keaton, but... The um, Superman, the motion picture, made me want to be a better person. When I think about being a man, I put that in. When I think about how I want to, to treat the woman that I love, I put that in. When I think about how I want to conduct myself in conflict resolution, I just look at that. You don't get that out of 89 Batman. You don't. And actually, that's a good point for, I think, all superhero movies. Because superhero movies now are all about 
action and the mission and whatever. But superheroes, to me, what they were originally created to be was uh, role models mm-hmm. to make you want to be a better person, to be moral. And I don't find that there's a lot of superhero movies nowadays when I walk out of theater go, man, I want to be a better person. I just think like, oh, that was a cool action movie. And I don't like that. I think that um, the most recent Wonder Woman movie kind of had that little, had a kind of inspirational effect. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's a a great movie, but I think it gave inspiration, uh, which goes a long way. Chris Reeve's Superman, definitely. I use that as like the cornerstone Mm -hmm. of wanting to be a, a good person. So for that reason, hitting at the core of what superheroes are, I would agree that the first room movie is it's definitely that guys i i require more out of a movie than just entertainment if i want to watch cartoons i'll stay home and watch scooby doo when i go to a film i want to be moved i want to be inspired i want to come out of there wanting to create my version of what i just saw and it all starts with a smaller story it all starts with you caring about the people and caring about the characters and how they interact with each other and how i can take that onto the streets and interact with with my loved ones more so and so whenever I go to see these, you know, amazing, wonderful action movies or these overblown, top-heavy Marvel movies that are making they're making nowadays, it doesn't make me want to do anything but ask for my money back. It's just, um, it's wonderful, it's colorful, they're spandex, but I'm not a child, and I require much more out of a film. I require caring and genuine caring, genuine writing, genuine acting, rather than just flying around and exploding things. I think that is a common misconception for a lot of movies nowadays that people mistake that for like a lot of depth and it being like a masterpiece. Like mm-hmm. I heard someone talk about one of the super movies and like it's a masterpiece, one of the greatest movies ever made. And I was like, um, I, I, mean, I think it's a lot of fun. I think it's a very, it's well executed for what it's trying to be and what it wants to be. And obviously mm-hmm. made a lot of money and it's very successful. So it did everything it wants to be. But trying to compare it to, you know, the greatest movies of all time, you know, mm-hmm. um, you know, Shawshank Redemption, Gone with the Wind, all these movies that have so much depth to them. Uh, I don't think it's that. I think Logan came very close to that. That's what I was going to get to. To me, Logan is the best superhero superhero movie that's come along in the last five years easily. Yeah. Because I cared about the characters. You take away the superpowers, and there weren't a lot of superpowers in that movie. Mm-hmm. You care about that. And when you look at that character, you can go to A Star is Born, Bradley Cooper's character, same character. You can go to um, Unforgiven, same character. Yeah. You can uh, definitely go to Jeff Bridges in Crazy Heart, same character. And what they do is they explore a gentleman that is you know, nearing the end of his existence and living with regret and wondering if there's enough time to turn it around. And that's a question that we all have. And they explored it, and I, I, I loved everything about Everything about Logan, I, I I think I saw it in the theaters four times, and I've Whoa. probably seen it six times since then. Oh, I've seen it like three times. All right, you should watch it more. It's good. It's you know what's funny is that um, I, I watched the movie in theaters and was like, this is great, and then um, don't worry, we'll edit out you dropping your cap. No, it, it makes me human. <laughs> makes you human. Makes, makes you relatable. Human. That's something that people struggle with every day. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I watched that movie with my mom. Mm -hmm. because she was like oh I want to see it and I was like all right and then I was like watch it's funny when you watch it with people that are not of that fan like that that, uh, like they're not fans Mm -hmm. that movie is so violent like Logan is so violent especially the opening sequence oh my god I watched that and I was was like this movie is so violent Uh, and she she didn't mind but it just threw like a different pair of eyes and I was like this might be the most violent movie I've ever seen which is great because Wolverine and you got claws for hands so of course you gotta be that way you could do the math and I think it's things that they danced around up until Logan you have claws you have flesh the claws are going to meet flesh and then heads are gonna pop off arms are gonna arms are gonna pop off that opening sequence I, I found just disturbing it was so real and it set the tone for the whole movie, which is good. And it also showed him as very vulnerable, which yeah. I liked. Uh, 